Welcome everybody to another heavy metal painting session and we're going to look at the High Elf Champion this time. So uh, before you probably saw the horse that I painted for this guy, if not then go back in the heavy lead series and you'll find um, that one there. I'm going to use a dark blue grey and this one I sort of mixed up myself. Um, it's not the actual original colour that you saw there. I did put some blue and some black into that particular pot. I'm actually mixing more blue into it because I think the High Elf armor should have a lot of blue in it. And I'm just applying that to the armored section, so everything that's got mail or armor plating on it, that's going to be basically silver. Uh, I'm using a non-metallic uh, metal method. Uh, you, of course, can use metallic paints if that's if you want to keep it really original. Uh, that's the only sort of thing that I don't keep really traditionally in my painting for... Uh, my 90s hobby, I do a lot of the non-metallic metals instead. So you want to give that a good coat, and probably two of those if you can. So just let the first coat dry, and give it another coat, just so that you've covered all the areas on the model. And um, yeah, so mainly, mainly it's his, uh, the boot armor, that's all plate, and all that sort of chain mail, or scale mail, that uh, on his uh, on his body and like a coat of mail and of course the sword as well um, give that a good coat good two coats if possible and last but not least it's around the helmet area as well just in the front part of it it's got those side guards and that little bit of area just between the gemstone and the headpiece is it quite an, a large ornate headpiece of a unicorn uh, that we'll paint, paint later. I'm basing it on the 4th edition um, uh, paint job from the studio so it's got a lot of white and that kind of thing. So we're going to do the unicorn now so I'm just putting uh, three paints on the palette there. I've got that verdigris from, these are all Vallejo game color paints by the way too. Uh, just some white ink just to help smooth it out a little bit more and give it a bit more, um, a bit more uh, vibrancy. Uh, and just some white paint, standard white paint. Um, I'm using all Vallejo model color mostly, uh, otherwise it's game color. Um, these are of course the paints I'm using, but if you don't have these paints at hand, then you can use something equivalent to get the right kind of shades of color. Um, now this is kind of the verdigris I did on the on the horse as well, for the horse um, barding. So, if you don't particularly want that kind of uh, greenish kind of um, grey look to it, just use a light grey. Uh, use something like um, elf grey or something like that uh, as an equivalent. I'm just putting some heavy dark green on my palette and also some like uh, it's called bad moon yellow I think from game color and we're just making a mix of that sort of 50 50 and we're going to do that on the headpiece. Now in here you'll see I'm going to actually paint the entire that, that those feathered sections in green. Uh, you don't have to do that. You could just mark out the sections that are green and leave the rest white, and leave and paint those white. I don't know why I did that. It's just something that I thought. Oh, I'm just going to paint the whole thing green and then go over and paint the the sections in white as white. So I don't know why I did it. It just happened that way. But I think it would make sense just to do those in just block sections. Um, so give that a good couple of coats to give it enough coverage. Uh, now, a lot of people ask me about the brush I'm using, and people before, um, over a couple of years or so, have always sent emails or messages in the comments saying what brush they're using. I'm actually using a Pentel Neo Sable brush. It's a brush available here in Japan. It's a, actually a calligraphy brush. Uh, it's like an it's a, an artificial brush. It's not a, not sable hair or anything like that on it. But it's a really good workhorse and it gets all the jobs done. I've, I've painted a lot of miniatures with these brushes so far and um, they're giving me really good results. So, uh, and brushes like just standard sable brushes, I've got to order them uh, from overseas. So this is just handy for me just to go down to the store and grab one. Uh, now we're going to just mix some more yellow and I'm, I apologize again for the angles <laughs> these. I tend to always pull the miniature towards myself, so I'm sort of sort of out of camera shot. I'm not looking at the camera, 
as much so if it's really coming in too close that's probably why I did try to narrow down and edit the the footage after that so that it's sort of focusing on this particular area that we're working on but um, yeah just make some yellow in there because you want a, a nice vibrant green yep so there's some more yellow into the green mix there I'm just using an old brush here that um, I'm actually going to dry brush well not dry brush but sort of I'm not actually removing any excess paint I'm sort of just brushing over the the paint that are on the bristles and I'm just going to brush it over that um, that that sort of rough texture of the um, the headpiece there uh, these head feathers and I'm just going to do that on all the sides um, you know so I'm not applying a lot of paint to my brush just enough so that I can get uh, paint onto the onto the bristles there so it's quite evident that um, I am changing the color there and the graduation of highlights so we're going to do this in a couple of steps I'm just going to add more yellow into this mix again and then do it the, the same thing okay so same thing again just repeating the process just adds more yellow and you're sort of just gradually building up the colors there but leaving you know the recesses all dark with that original dark green and you can just see it sort of just picking up just the very fine edges of the details and giving us a nice uh, highlight here I don't tend to dry brush as much because it leaves the paint very chalky looking and I don't like that effect myself so yeah it's sort of just sort of wet brushing if you like uh, quite kind of the opposite but it gives me the, the desired effect that I want um, pretty much the same as dry brushing I think but just leaving the paint nice and smooth and um, nowhere near as chalky as um, as regular dry brushing so you can see a nice vibrant yellow coming through here in the green and I think we're almost ready to add some white stripes to it so here we go we're gonna add some stripes here so very similar to the one in the Evermetal metal photos from the army book and I'm going to place them in pretty much exactly the same places so yeah the verdigris will act as the base coat for that and then we're going to highlight um, those up with some white later on yep so just keeping the spacing as even as possible if you can and then we're going to draw those you know those blocks back on either side towards the center just under like a triangle shaped uh, pattern um, so yeah, use the use the fourth edition army book photo of the champion. It's in the inside cover of the fourth edition high off book as a constant reference. That's what I was doing. I was sort of looking over and just checking, making sure that everything sort of matched up correctly. And once we've fa finished placing those in, now we can go back with some white and we're going to do some highlights, just sort of picking out sort of strands of those you know those fibers or hairs on the mat on that headdress and we're sort of going to start from the top and pull the way down that's kind of the idea here so we're leaving some of the verdigris uh, down the bottom still and we're sort of making the the tops of the those white sections nice and white and bright but just leaving a little bit of verdigris there to give us a bit of sense of depth um, in the feathers okay so with the headdress done we're going to go and do some lining now some black lining and I've just got some black like chaos black equivalent kind of thing plus a little bit of uh, black ink just to make it a bit more fluid and um, not to lose its you know it's in um, its vibrancy or uh, its color so much um, so just did that and I'm just lining in all the sections where there will be you know uh, separation of colors and that kind of thing um, and then just adding some white and uh, over the verdigris on the the headpiece of that unicorn as well just touching up the feathers of the green just adding some uh, bit of um, a bit of a um, it's called elfic flesh it's just like you know like bone color or um, an ivory color that kind of thing you can even put um, any, anything like that you can just put white in there if you want if you wanted to just do some extra highlights and I'm just putting down some heavy gold brown and the heavy gold brown will be all the oh the gold pieces basically all the gold sections so all that um, the lining in around 
the sections of its headpiece, around the gemstones. Uh, there's actually quite a lot of gold on this miniature, as I realized later. So yeah, we'll go. We'll cover all the parts of gold that's on this guy. But um, there's quite a lot on his sort of ornamental armor. Um, there's quite a, quite a few plates and that kind of thing where they have gold. And I'm just going in with some flesh paint here, some flesh color. I've just got a uh, sunny skin tone I'm using for the uh, the base of the flesh. I'm just going to try to get that in as neatly as I can. They're quite small, the, the, um, the vents where the, the faces are protruding from the, mar uh, from the from inside the mask. So yeah, it's quite difficult, bit of a challenge to get, <laughs> to get those uh, faces in sometimes with the silver helms. But um, yeah, just putting in the nose and cheeks and the um, the chin and that kind of thing. If you can do that, I think that's pretty good. And you can st still see there's something there. Now with the armor, we're going to highlight that. So we've got the, we have the base coat on there. I'm using a French Mirage Blue. That's the uh, sort of the mid-tone highlight for the for the scale armor. I'll just put that on an old brush. And again, I'm sort of doing that kind of wet brush technique, adding white into that mix of the Mirage Blue. And again, same thing, just going straight over the scales. Try not to get it too thick and messy, just trying to just very really lightly brush over it so I'm not causing any streaks. It's sort of blended through nicely and you know you don't have like big brush strokes um, appearing um, in sections. Now with the gold, we're going to go back with the heavy gold brown and we're going to put that on all the extra bits and pieces that we've sort of um, need to be gold basically. Uh, which is quite a lot so it's got that sort of ornamental armor around his um, chest there it's got these two round uh, plates it's got the hilt of the sword um, and some other parts as well that we can see there that i'm going to paint in gold so have, after having done that um, we're just going to do these these parts of the uh, the saddle and that kind of thing the stirrups i should say that is feet are in, we're going to paint those gold as well. Um, so it's going to be a base coat, color, coat of gold. And yeah, these big solid wedge plates. Now I noticed that my bottom half is maybe different than the one in the 4th edition book. Um, I think that's correct, I'm not sure. I know that there's quite a few different, I think there's about three or four different variants of um, legs you can get for the silver helms. And I noticed my standard bearer is different from the one in the book, but it was packaged like that. So unfortunately, I didn't notice it until much later. Uh, I would have loved to have the uh, red boots on that guy. But I think this one's okay. I think this is the correct sort of matchup for him. Um, we've got some blue on our palette as well. We've got, I love, I love the Prussian blue from uh, Malaya uh, Mo uh, Model Color. So I'm using a dark Prussian blue. And there is a just a, like just Prussian blue, which is kind of the mid tone of it. Um, and I think for this section, I'm just using Prussian blue. Okay, so just using that as a base coat, and then later on we'll highlight the blue sections as well. Um, so basically, yeah, it's basically like all the leather kind of armor that he's wearing is all in blue, and it has this red trim. Now the red trim, sadly, I didn't cap capture on film, um, but it's pretty straightforward. It's um, you know you sort of just black line around the edges of where the the very fine the, the very edge of the trim is. Um, you know, paint that in white or in a flesh color or a bone color, and then go over that with a red. So you'll probably see it in a minute when it pops up in one of the screens where all the edges are red, and uh, that's the reason why. Okay, so we're getting to the armor. I'm just going to highlight that, just adding some verdigris into the Prussian blue. And we're just going to run that across the parts of the blue, just on sort of a 50-50 you know, part of the sections where there is a armor. We want to create you know, a transition from the base color, mid-tone, and the final highlight. So we're just going to do that. I'm just going to just line in all the highlights on the blue leather armor. Going back to original mix, we're going to add some more verdigris into that mix now to make it a little bit lighter. And again, we're just going to line in again over the top of the mid-tone. We're sort of creating a sort of a, a lighter highlight here to give more distinction to the folds on the creases of the uh, under armor there. 
and um, yeah once we have that done we can start doing some final highlights so you can really see some definition in the armor okay adding some more verdigris almost complete like straight verdigris we're just going to do a final highlight here and pick out the very edges now sort of line those in on the armor uh, to give us a very very nice looking highlight at the end so if you've gotten this far guys you did really well so now we're sort of making we're sort of shaping up the model now all the colors are sort of coming together and yeah we're making it um, giving them more shape and distinction and definition and sense of depth which is good so it may have looked like a bit of a mess in the beginning but um, the more you keep at it and sort of work on small sections uh, you can see um, you know things sort of come together all right i think now we're going to go into our armor plates so we did the chainmail before but now we're going to work on the sword so basically it's the same sort of principle we're going to keep one half dark and one half light so i've just had sort of this mid-tone so i've got some of the french mirage blue put into the base color and i'm just going to paint one section on that flat side towards him uh, in that color and then i'm just going to use the side of my brush and then i'm just going to paint in the edge of that sword so you'll just see that sort of that glistening line of light but keeping that edge on that other side fairly dark for now um, again sort of just building up the highlights adding some more and just going back over again and it's quite a re repetitive process but you know if you're doing metallics it's kind of just like you know you lay down the metallic color you wash it and maybe you don't even highlight it you just leave it as is and i think the guys back in the studio did that anyway um, so this is a non-metallic uh, way of doing it. I mean, if this is just too much for you and you think, well, I just can't be bothered, uh, just paint it metallics and you know, you'll be away and you're sort of keeping it sort of traditional in a sense. But I really, really like, as soon as I made the switch to non metallic metals, that was it for me. I, I was just hooked on it. Um, and it's been like that ever since. And I really don't like going back to metallic so much. So, uh, yeah, adding some more definition to the saw now, we're going to put a bit of a sort of a line of light or you know sort of a glistening sort of area of light in the center of that sword um, and we're going to do that just by blending in part of the mid-tone highlight into that section there and then we're going to just keep on trying to shape this the sword because that's all we're doing really we're sort of just shaping it with color and and sort of painting in detail if you like um, and then just you know, when, once you get lighter and lighter, you're sort of focusing that into a certain section of the sword. You're not covering everything in that white um, paint. You're sort of just picking out certain areas, um, getting it thinner and thinner, in small and smaller regions of the sword. And that's what you, that's what that what gives it kind of its um, um, you know pop basically. Yeah. Um, so do that. I only did one side of the sword, and, and you'll see later I've done the other side just to speed things up. I've decided to give the guy black hair, and I can't remember if he actually had black hair in the in the book. Now, I just think at the time it just seemed like a uh, you know appropriate color. I've got a lot of gold on there. I didn't want to do yellow, um, and um, yeah, I thought black was just a color that was uh, not going to you know detract too much from the other colors on there. I'm going back now to do the armor plates. Uh, sections on his um, like his gauntlets, um, the chest plate armor, and his uh, foot mail armor and that kind of uh, his foot plate armor. Sorry, as well uh, everything that's basically in in that sort of silver metal. I'm now going to just go in there and just just do some highlights, line them in in those very small tight sections there, just to give a bit more distinction and a um, bit more um, shape to it. Yeah, so just again, sort of just lining in. Uh, we don't have to be too, you know, we don't have to really create lots of layers here. We're just sort of defining a very small section of an area that um, it doesn't need a lot of blending and that kind of thing. So we're sort of just picking out those, you know, knuckled areas around the, the hands and the, you know, the, the plate, the, where the plates fold over. Just whole, highlighting that section is enough and it gives a nice, clean, clear distinction of where the plates are and that kind of thing. So that's what we're trying to do here, guys. Uh, some parts you won't even see because the shield will cover uh, parts of the hand. And so if that's not something that's really important to you, you could even bypass that altogether. 
Uh, same thing here. I'm going to blend a little bit here on the 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 plate on the boots though because um, they're a little bit wider and, and a bit thicker there. So we want to make a bit more of a, a nice cleaner blend on that part of it. Uh, we're going back with the gold and I think most sections probably need another coat. So I'm going to go in there and give another coat, base coat of the gold. And we're going to start doing some highlights soon as well on that so we can see how the gold's going to shape up. Um, so yeah, these, these are colours I haven't used in the previous one for the horse. So we're looking at different, um, different areas this time. Like the sword is the, probably the most important one. Uh, if you're looking for more of a non-metallic way of doing it, the non-metallic uh, metals and that kind of thing are pr pretty important. Uh, so we'll try to focus on those, uh, doing the um, the paint painting videos and that kind of thing. I'm going to add a bit of brown chestnut ink um, to the gold sections. Just line them into the areas where I know that's going to be shaded. Um, you can wash it on if you wanted to. Uh, washing on is not a bad idea. Uh, but what we'll do is actually it will actually coat everything so that the areas which is, should be light will be covered in a, that sort of dark tint. So I prefer to just line it in or place it in areas where I know it's going to be um, shaded in the first place and you don't have to cover everything. So now to highlight the gold, we are going to add some uh, beige. Now I've got beige on my palette there and I've got some of that elfic flesh and the elfic flesh is a really good color. If you don't have elfic flesh just use ivory because ivory and elfic flesh are almost exactly the same. They're both Vallejo game color paint, uh, paints so they, they work equally as well. If you don't have any of those two paints just use white and that'll be perfect as well. Uh, white I usually use at the very very end um, if, I'm, if I'm doing something like that. Um, and now you can sort of really see the distinction there, shaping up the the gold parts on the model. And yeah, it's looking pretty good so far. I'm pretty happy with it. So I hope you guys are following along or using some of these techniques. I hope they're being useful for you so far. If they have, please let me know in the comments. Okay, now we're going to try to finish off this gold. So again, we're just using the Elfic flesh or ivory or white just to line in the uh, raised areas there of the gold on the hilt um, just sort of line in as we normally do with any kind of um, highlights we make on colors um, you just want to pick out the raised areas and um, yeah it looks pretty good so far uh, if you need to go in and sort of shade things more you can just do that with a little bit more of the ink and sort of just place it into areas where you want to create more of a um, more of a contrast between the two, because you, you know, I I don't do sky earth metals. I really don't like them. Um, I like more of a subtle subtle approach to the non-metallic metals. Uh, but if you want to really go nuts with the contrast, you can do that. And um, and but I think this way it gives the effect. Um, just adding some white here and there in sort of dots and spots can sort of make it look like these, you know, really uh, centered sort of reflections on the metals and that kind of thing, which look really effective. I'm going over with some white again, just on the scale parts of the armor, just in places where I think, oh, it should just pick out some little bits of flecks of light here and there on his shiny armor. Now you probably would have seen some parts were red and as I told you before that sort of got missed in the footage but here I'm sort of highlighting the red so it was I gave it a base, base coat of vermilion uh, that's another Vallejo model color range uh, paint um, but if you've got another red it's all the same really um, just a nice vibrant red I'm just adding some yellow into that and I've got some orange ink a really really old bottle um, that my mother actually gave me because my mother's an artist and she had all these sort of ink bottles on her painting table many many years ago and um, like from a German company which had been absolutely brilliant they're still going which is amazing tiny little bottles um, but yeah they've got these really beautiful intense um, color to them so I'm just using a bit of that I'm using a bit of yellow in the red 
and I'm just going to make some highlights here, just sort of lining in and blending through as well on the larger sections. But for the for the for the the lining around the armor and that kind of thing, just one line of that highlight will be sufficient, and um, it gives it a nice warm, rich color. Uh, the face, uh, I'm just going to go back in there and sort of just highlight sections of the raised areas on his face, trying not to put any paint on the um, on the areas around it, uh, that's quite difficult. And I'm just adding a little bit of red there, a bit of rouge on his lips. So they always have always the high elves always have this sort of uh, red bottom lip. Um, so I'm, I've done that as well. And uh, yeah, I think now it's really coming along together really nicely. And I think the next step we'll sort of look at is uh, the gemstones. Before we get to the gemstones, though, I just want to go in through and just highlight highlight his hair so I did paint it with a base coat of black and I'm just using the same the sort of the base color for the armor and using that to highlight the hair again with a sort of sort of a wet brush kind of technique uh, just brushing the paint over the raised area so keeping the brush sort of flat not sort of pointed directly towards it just keeping sort of the flat edge of the brush over so I'll just sort of just drag it over and sort of pick out all the, the highlights on the areas of the, of the detail and now we get to the the um, gemstones. Now the gemstones are so small; it's really hard to capture on film uh, in a very very small space. And if I if I zoom in any further with the editing, then it's going to look really blurry, and it's not going to look very good at all. But you know, if you want to see how a gemstone's done, it's basically the same if you're just doing it on a very flat surface. So. In the when I did the horse tutorial, I did like the freehand section, the the star and the gemstone in the center. I did a couple of the couple of those on the uh, on the barding. Basically, it's exactly the same principle. You know, you're just giving the red just a base coat of red. Then you adding, in this case, I've got some um, gory red, which is a um, a really good color actually. I love it. It's um a really deep sort of um, a burgundy red, and I just added that. To the to the base red, put that on the top, so you have the top that's all dark, and the bottom part of the sort of the glass on the on the gemstone is going to be, you know, almost translucent. So we put a lot of uh, yellows in there uh, to make it a lot lighter. And we sort of just blend those two th uh, together until we find a sort of a happy meeting between the two. And when you think, okay, that's enough, I think I've I've sort of reached the desired effect. Um, then you can place um, a little bit of like just straight black black paint on the very top of it and maybe a white line right down the bottom of it and then just place a very small speck of white in the black area at the top of the gemstone and that's it that's pretty much it so uh, once you once you get a lot of practice doing it with the high because I've got so many of them so I think this model had at least Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, I think six or so gemstones on just one model. So when you do like an entire regiment of these guys, you know, you'll be doing um, 40, 50, 60 of them at least. So yeah, you'll get lots and lots of practice. Um, so if you're not sure or not confident about doing uh, gemstones, yeah, you can do it on a piece of paper. You could just, you know, you could paint on a piece of paper um, and get practice doing it that way. Um, adding ink to it as well can help just to give it a bit more um, uh, make the paints more fluid and getting a nice contrast there so we're going to wrap up now guys with the shield as we're getting closer to the end of this tutorial so I wanted to go onto the shield because here we're going to look at some freehand uh, not too dissimilar to what we did on the barding of the horse it's going to be very really similar but this time it's going to be a base coat of blue because the shield is blue so I'm just giving that a coat of the uh, Prussian blue and give that a couple of coats and let that dry until you've got a nice uh, even surface. Then I'm gonna use some of the heavy brown, uh, heavy, yeah, heavy brown. And I'm gonna put in, I'm sort of just gonna pencil in uh, with my brush the shape. Now, a lot of these star shapes have, was that two, four, six, eight, 10, I think 10 points on them. Um, I think that's a little bit too excessive, so I sort of went back 
and um, did them with uh, what's it one two three four five six seven eight 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 points instead of ten. Um, yeah, I found ten points are just too 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 much too too much detail crammed in such a small space. So um, that's the only sort of difference there. Um, but yeah, if you saw the horse tutorial uh, when I did on the barding or the freehand, this is basically exactly the same. Um, it's the same symbol. And um, yeah, so again, uh, if you're not really confident in doing freehand, I think High Elves, uh, one of those factions that, um, unless you have transfers, of course, but if not, if you're going to do it all by hand, uh, this is a great way to get good at it because you'll be doing it a lot. Um, if you want to achieve all those nice motifs and um, all the symbolism with the runic uh, emblems and that kind of thing for the High Elves, yeah, they're a great faction uh, for doing that kind of stuff. You want to get good at um, doing freehand uh, because it is a skill. It's like anything. It's like drawing or um, just you know painting in a you know, two-dimensional space or whatever. Um, it's all the same. It's just, just practice and practice until you get um, better at it and you get more confident at it. And, you know, some guys are absolutely, and some men and women are absolutely amazing at it. Um, I'm just... I'm just okay at it. I'm sort of just get 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 by with what I think is um, a, a good representation of what I see um, in the um, in the heavy metal uh, pages and that kind of thing. I mean, for the banners, I've printed a lot of them and painted over the top of them. In a lot of cases, I haven't done a lot of. Um, well, I did I did a lot of uh, freehand banners early in, in the early days, but now I just find just photocopying them, painting over the top. Um, uh, sort of just you know does the job for me nowadays, but of course shields and that kind of thing you got to you got to paint by hand. So once you've got the shape right and ready, and you sort of highlight it up with a bit of uh, white or a bit of elfic flesh or ivory, you can line in where the stone is going to be. And unfortunately, uh, due to uh, filming circumstances, um, it got it was out of shot. So sorry about that, but again, it's just the same thing. Um, so have a look at the barding one, because I think the barding one for the high elf horse gave, gave a much better representation of actually painting um, and doing freehand uh, more so than this. But I just wanted to show you um, how I did the shield. And basically the principles are the same, um, how to do the, the gemstones are the same. And there we have it. So at the final, the final part was I just um, put some uh, edge highlights on the edge of the shield and that's done so we made it guys well done uh, if you enjoyed this please check out more of the Ebby lead series of painting tutorials check out our latest fanzine that's issue number three that's, uh, the links will be in the show notes um, if you'd like to check out our podcast do so again the links will be in the description in the video and if you'd like to support me and buy me a beer a month then please consider becoming a patron 